A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I have received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is a new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to all. This is our last Advent Mass, the morning Mass of Christmas Eve. So as we celebrate these sacred mysteries, we have the beautiful prayer of Zachariah the Benedictus. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, and in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. There's no Mass intention officially scheduled for today, so I'd like to offer the Mass for the deceased members of my family, my many cousins who have died, and also for a cure for all cancer. Let us pray. Come quickly, we pray, Lord Jesus, and do not delay, that those who trust in your compassion may find solace and relief in your coming, who lives and reigns with you, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel, chapter 7, 1 through 5, 8b through 12, 14a and 16. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pastor and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones on earth. I will fix a power, a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise you up. I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make the kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsible song number 89. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. 
forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, forever will I confirm your prosperity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness towards him and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Please stand. Hallelujah. 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 O radiant dawn, splendor of eternal light, son of justice, come and shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Zechariah, his father, filled with the Holy Spirit, prophets, I say, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. David is mentioned over 1100 times in the Old Testament and today's scripture reading is beautiful because it shows the promise made to David and that promise is fulfilled in Jesus Christ and in the gospel we have the beautiful prayer of Zechariah. The prayer of Zechariah regards the completion of salvation and John his son who he's going to be. He's going to prepare the way of the Lord when God will renew his covenant with us and we know Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior made a new covenant seed with his blood for all of us. Zechariah I think represents us men very well because when the angel came to him first and told him about the birds he didn't believe and because of his disbelief he struck down. I know here at Most Holy Trinity we've been trying very hard to get the men to say yes to the quads. And so far we have no success. We have several women's ones going and we have the prospect of many more. But when it comes to the men, men throughout the Old Testament and still today can be very stubborn and very hard-hearted and hard to move. That's the reality of us men. When it comes to the things of God, we're slow to say yes. Zachariah was slow to say yes, but the good news is men are capable of changing and they're capable of changing their minds. Where they said no, maybe they'll say yes, and maybe they'll say yes to God like Zachariah and do God's will. Because I've no doubt every man would be a better man if he participated in the choir. And I'm for sure he would be closer to Jesus if he participated in the choir. Hopefully it won't take an angel coming to you to, to, to say, get you to say yes to a quad. And hopefully you will be closer to God a year from now by being part of a quad. May we learn from Zechariah. It's okay to change your mind when it comes to God and do the right thing and give God the glory. Be filled with the Holy Spirit like Zechariah. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. 
Let us pray for all the deceased members of my family, for all those who are battling cancer, for people doing research, may they find a cure for all cancer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This coronavirus is lethal and taking so many lives. We pray for the people doing the vaccines. We pray that they'll get them to everybody all over the world as soon as possible. No effort will be spared. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For God's guidance and direction in all that we say and do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all human beings to believe in the great mystery of the Incarnation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people to renew their faith, and especially here at Most Holy Trinity, the people will be open and willing to say yes to the quiet discipleship process. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of all people traveling by sea, land, or air, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they rest in God's peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank God for this day. We pray everyone will have a Merry Christmas. We thank God for this Advent season. May we do God's will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good is of his holy church. Graciously make your own, O Lord, the offerings which we bring, that partaking of them we may be cleansed of our sins and merit to stand ready with pure hearts for the coming in glory of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with the love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find his watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Today we pray the first Eucharistic prayer of reconciliation it is in your Mass book and a quote from St. Irenaeus of Lyons from the year 140. Just as the bread which comes from the earth, having received the invocation of God, is no longer ordinary bread, the Eucharist consisting of two realities, earthly and heavenly, so our bodies, having received the Eucharist, are no longer corruptible because they have the hope of the resurrection. You're indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out in them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son who alone is just handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross, but before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Louis our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. True him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace on our, in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternity. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Grant to us to find new vigor, O Lord, in these your wondrous gifts, 
that as we prepare to celebrate in adoration the festivities of your son's nativity, so we may possess in gladness these everlasting rewards who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for me. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> in 2 Samuel, the seventh chapter, various verses, uh, he generally speaks of David's desire to build a temple. The prophet goes through God's words for Nathan, the prophet, to pass on to David, mostly saying that he, God, does not want a physical building built by David for him. Why? God will build a dynasty of David's kin. It would help in reading this chapter, chapter 7 of 2 Samuel, to realize there is a definite play on the various meanings of the word house. In verses five, in verses one and two, it means palace. In verses five, six, seven, and 13, it means temple. In verses 11, 16, and on and off to 29, it means dynasty. And in verse 18, it means family status. We're establishing that Jesus, through Joseph, his foster father, is fulfilling God's promise of the kingdom of David enduring forever. And as we Christians know, Jesus' kingdom is much, much more significant than any earthly kingdom. In Psalm 89, a king prays for deliverance from his enemies, even mentioning David in verses three and four. I have made a covenant with my chosen one, I have sworn to David my servant, forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. All of Psalm 9 is strengthening the truth of God's promise being fulfilled century upon century. Finally, in Luke, dear Luke, whose literary style was of such high quality, not only in his chapters during Jesus' life, but also in his Acts of the Apostles. We come to Jesus' time. John the Baptist's birth is highly acclaimed due to the circumstances surrounding it. His parents were barren and old. How could they bring a child into the world? But they did. And not only did they bring a baby into the world, but his father was struck down for nine months before his birth, and he's now speaking and hearing and says, his name is John, a name his mother Elizabeth also agrees to. Zechariah, after nine months of not a word, is filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke a prophecy we now know as the Benedictus, full of beauty, glory, and praise of uh, forecasting his son's identity as prophet of the Most High, going before him, preparing his way. And I say, realizing all that went before and the celebration of the nativity of the Most High Himself, Jesus Christ, yes, yes, it is a merry, merry Mass of Christ. Very good, May. Got a cute uh, um, joke here. It's entitled Louisiana. A senior citizen in Louisiana was overheard saying, when the end of the world comes, I hope to be in Louisiana. When asked why, he replied, I'd rather be in Louisiana because everything happens in Louisiana 20 years later than in the rest of the world. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And, with you. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Merry Christmas. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Let us pray, O God, and